the best show on television right now is The Good Place. And I'll hear no arguments about it. It's just a fact. Don't at me. Is that what the kids still say? Anyway, it's hilarious, it's heartwarming, and it's so fucking smart that it makes me want to pick up my old college philosophy textbooks again. Um, I mean, if I hadn't already sold all of them except for this one for ramen money as soon as classes ended. Sorry, Nietzsche, nobody, nobody wanted you. Uh, the show is all about philosophy, and it goes into many of the different philosophies that humans have tried to come up with over the years to help explain our world and our place in it, and particularly how we treat one another. I enjoy the show for the same reason that I kind of hated my college philosophy classes, because it's so damn confusing sometimes to figure out what's right once you start seriously examining why you think some action is good or bad, morally speaking. Anyway, I'm thinking about all of this right now because of the recent news that Wendy Rogers, who is professor of clinical ethics at Macquarie University in Australia, uh, published a report demanding that more than 400 scientific studies be retracted because they may have been based on studying organs that had been harvested non-consensually from Chinese prisoners. I already don't know what to think of it, and we haven't even made it past the headline yet. Um, for several years now, human rights activists, world leaders, and scientific journals uh, have called on China to stop harvesting the organs of their prisoners without those prisoners' consent. And China claims that they've mostly stopped that practice, but there's still no law on the books about it. But the numbers don't look good for them, uh, seeing as they claim that they, they're they transplanting a fraction of the organs that they actually are transplanting. It's obviously still happening, and it appears to be way more frequent than volunteered organ donation. So Rogers examined hundreds of studies from the past decade, and she found that 99% of them didn't prove that they got consent in their research on the transplanted organs. Uh, as an example of the type of research we're talking about, um, The Guardian points out that back in 2017, a prestigious journal retracted one study looking at the outcomes for liver transplants over the course of four years in one Chinese hospital. It's important data, uh, but they counted more than 500 livers in that time period, a number that would have been absolutely impossible with the known number of organ donation volunteers in China at that time. Immediately here, I have an ethical dilemma. Uh, several, in fact. The first one is this. Should we throw away good science that was done via unethical practices? Do the ends justify the means? Or at least do the means not matter anymore because they've already been done? Uh, let's quickly look at one of the biggest examples of this in science. Uh, there are about 30 known large Nazi experimentation projects performed on human prisoners. And we have the data from those experiments today. They're applicable to those studying hypothermia, chemical weapons, fertility, and many other fields. If you take an extremely simplified view of things, you could say that the experiments have already been done, and if the data can help human lives in the future, then it would actually be unethical to not use that data. But things are always more complicated. What if using that data inspires other people to perform unethical experimentation on humans? Because again, maybe the result will justify it then the ethics start to become a bit more muddied. Philosophy aside, there's a scientific reason to discard these uh, this research. Unethical research is often badly done research. In 1990, Dr. Robert L. Berger published a detailed investigation of the Dachau hypothermia experiments in the New England Journal of Medicine, finding that they were, and I quote, riddled with inconsistencies and showed clear evidence of data falsification and outright fabrication. And when you step back to think about it, of course, it's really obvious. The Nazis might have had a few smart guys working for them, but overall, it was an evil, fucked up regime that believed absolute fairy tales like, well, like the idea of Ultima Thule being a magical place full of giant Ubermensch. 
Add to that that a scientist who has no problem putting hundreds of people in cold vats of water and allowing them to freeze to death probably wasn't big on things like double blinding and statistical significance. And when his bosses are super pleased to do things like that and much worse to innocent people simply because of their ethnicity or religion, you know this scientist is going to want to keep his bosses happy with his results, even if that means fudging some numbers here and there. He's not going to be keen to be the next experimental subject, after all. So there, I have deftly avoided making any philosophical uh, conclusion by showing that there's an empirical reason to discard science that is done with unethical practices. Whew, that was a close one. I almost had to use those two classes of ethical philosophy I took 10 years ago. To get back to the Chinese transplant case, I still had some other ethical concerns with it, uh, specifically related to the point of these studies, organ donation. Is it unethical to take a dead person's organs without their consent? I know this is probably not going to win me many fans, but my gut has always said no. The ethical thing in all cases is to take every last bit of a dead body that might be useful to living humans and put it to use. Eyes, heart, liver, kidneys, whatever someone else needs the dead don't need it anymore, and even if you have some superstitious idea of what should be done to a body after death, that should not supersede someone else's right to live. Once you're dead, you no longer deserve bodily autonomy. It's like the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, but even worse, it's the needs of the many outweigh the desires of the none. None because you're dead. You aren't even a one anymore. So in that case, with that philosophical outlook, does it make it unethical that these studies involve organs that were harvested without permission? Again, in that simplified world, no, easy call. If it's always ethical to harvest organs, it's ethical to study any harvested organs. But again, unfortunately, it's not that simple. I know it's, it's annoying, isn't it? Here's the problem. Those organs aren't just going to sick people who need them to live. They're going to tourists who can pay for them. This has resulted in an entire capitalistic industry being built around the harvesting of organs in China. Combine that with an industry that already exists there, built around the imprisonment and subsequent execution of political adversaries, and now you have people who are in prison for disagreeing with the Chinese government, who are then executed at a very specific date and time, primarily because a new person has shown up looking to pay good money for their kidneys, or what have you. And now you have a government that is being rewarded for executing its critics, and boom, there goes your perfectly ethical solution. And it actually gets worse, if you can believe it. Uh, generally, you harvest organs from dead people, but Amnesty International claims that China's definition of dead doesn't exactly match the rest of the world's, so they are actually frequently pulling organs out of people while they're still alive, simply to fill the demand for the organs. And that is the mental journey that I went down after reading this news, uh, starting from thinking that there's no way prominent journals should retract 400 scientific papers to realizing that they absolutely 100% should as a scientific, moral, and ethical necessity.